What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. This is my monologue podcast that comes out every Friday. It's on my podcast, which is called Fundamental Health. And I'm going to put it on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else. But I wanted to talk this week about almond milk. People who are interested in plant-based diets in general love almond milk. This has become the darling of the industry recently with all sorts of companies jumping on the bandwagon to make all sorts of alternatives to dairy milk. We're going to talk about soy milk at the end of this mini podcast as well, but I want to start by focusing on almond milk and specifically an ingredient that is often present in both almond milks and soy milks called carrageenan. But before we get to carrageenan and an interesting paper that I found and why you should probably be avoiding carrageenan in your diet in general, I wanted to tell you guys about the concept of an animal-based diet and when I'm talking to people about this, they don't always understand nuts. Can I eat nuts? Aren't they good for me? Paleolithic diets include nuts, paleo diets, and aren't almonds good for me? So this video is about all the reasons you don't want to eat almonds and you don't want to eat almond milk. Now, obviously, carrageenan is an additive to almond milk, but it's still a reason not to eat, consume many almond milks. But there are other problems with almonds like oxalates. But in general, when you think about things from the perspective of a plant-based uh, a plant-based organism, a plant, the, these plants want to defend their seeds. And so as I've talked about many times, plant, plants put so many different defense chemicals into their seeds. They put oxalates and lectins and digestive enzyme inhibitors. Plant babies are what seeds are. And whether seeds are seeds, nuts like almonds, grains like wheat or barley or oats or legumes like soy or kidney beans, these are all plant seeds. These are all some of the most highly defended foods out there, which is why I recommend against consuming them at all on an animal-based diet. So an animal-based diet is different than a paleolithic diet because it doesn't have any seeds of any kind, no nuts, no grains, no legumes, no beans, because these are highly defended. So pause on that thought. We're going to talk about how harmful the oxalates in almonds can be, specifically in kids and in adults, causing genitourinary problems. So bladder problems and kidney problems. And before we get to that, I want to talk about this really cool paper looking at carrageenan, a long chain sulfated polysaccharide found in algae that's extracted from algae and put into a lot of foods as a thickener. So yet another reason not to eat almond milk. So check this paper out. This is really interesting. Came across this one recently. The title is a carrageenan free diet shows improved glucose tolerance and insulin signaling in prediabetes, a randomized pilot clinical trial. So as I talk about a lot, this is an interventional trial. This is not epidemiology. This is observational trial. This was published on the 21st of April, 2020. So it's a pretty recent trial. So they say in the abstract, carrageenan is well known to cause inflammation. So this is a long chain sulfated polysaccharide found in uh, seaweeds and algae well known to cause inflammation, used in laboratory experiments to study mediators and treatments of inflammation. However, carrageenan is added to hundreds of processed foods to improve the texture. Previous work indicated that low concentrations of carrageenan in drinking water caused marked glucose intolerance and insulin resistance in a mouse model. Why would that be the case? So we have to imagine that if carrageenan is bad for humans, it's bad for us because it's damaging the gut. That's something about this long chain sulfated polysaccharide that we probably never saw much of evolutionarily and perhaps is some sort of a plant defense molecule in these aquatic plants is actually harming our gut and causing some degree of leaky gut. And what an interesting connection that is between leaky gut and insulin resistance, overall inflammation. This is certainly something that I've talked about in the past, but not something that Western medicine really wraps its head around much that there could be connections between GI inflammation, specifically damage to the gut epithelium causing quote, quote unquote leaky gut, as we know it colloquially, and overall activation of the immune system, inflammation, insulin resistance. How fascinating is that? But in this paper, this is exactly what the researchers are suggesting, that when they removed carrageenan from the diets of 13 patients with prediabetes, so not a very big study, but interesting. It was a 12-week randomized parallel uh, arm feeding trial. One group was provided with all meals and snacks with no carrageenan. A second group received a similar diet 
with an equivalent content of all the macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrates, but with carrageenan. That was the only difference. What a cool controlled trial. Blood samples were collected and they found the findings indicated that there were improvements in hemoglobin A1C and HOMA IR. Hemoglobin A1C, as many of you know, will be an average 90-day blood sugar based on the amount of glycogen hemoglobin in red blood cells. HOMA IR is a calculated index based on the fasting insulin and fasting glucose. It gives us a sense of insulin resistance. Both of these targets are talking about glucose tolerance. There was an improvement in A1C and HOMA IR in participants with no carrageenan diets, but not in participants on carrageenan containing diets. Significant differences between groups suggest that removing carrageenan may improve insulin signaling and glucose tolerance. Basically what they're saying here is that if you mess up your gut, if you inflame your gut with carrageenan or potentially with lectins or anything that causes inflammation in your gut, that could negatively affect insulin signaling and glucose tolerance. Clearly, as they say in the last line here, larger studies are needed to further consider the impact of carrageenan on the development of diabetes. If you go through the paper, you'll see these are significant findings. They all meet the p-value cutoffs. And even with small, small groups, right? One group of eight people, one group of five, there were statistically significant findings in this study with the removal of carrageenan. So it's very clear. You do not want carrageenan in your diet, whether from almond milk or soy milk or cream cheese or anything else like that. Read the labels, guys. You do not want carrageenan in your diet. In my research for this video, I came across a pretty good website. I don't know what the Cornucopia Institute is, but they have a great shopping guide to avoiding organic foods with carrageenan. As you can see, carrageenan can be in buttermilk, not all, it can be in chocolate milk, cottage cheese, cream, uh, eggnog, ice cream, kefir, although they said they found no kefirs with carrageenan, sour cream, yogurt, okay, uh, dairy alternatives, almond milk, Pacific Foods, President Choice, Trader Joe's. This is cornucopia.org, shopping guide to organic foods with carrageenan. Cheese alternatives. I don't know why you'd ever eat a cheese alternative. Chocolate soy beverage. A lot of them have carrageenan. Coconut beverage. All those have carrageenan. Thankfully, no coconut waters had carrageenan. Those are not supposed to be really thickened in general. Coffee creamers did have carrageenan. Fresh desserts, all kinds of things. Hemp beverages, perhaps. Maybe oat beverages, although they said they didn't find any oat beverages, but rice beverages do. Soy beverages, tons, as we talked about. Non-dairy yogurts, all kinds of things here with carrageenan, guys. Even organic daily meat, Applegate and Dites and Watson, had carrageenan in them. Why would you eat deli meat in the first place? Eat real meat, eat organs, or get some desiccated organs from us at Hardened Soil. Uh, and then you can see there are all kinds of other foods here that have carrageenan. We shouldn't really be eating processed foods in general. Like it just doesn't make any sense. And if you're questionable, if you're questioning or you're wondering what carrageenan is, you can see the pictures here on the Wikipedia entry, these sulfated long chain polymers, uh, polysaccharides. So avoid carrageenan protect your gut, read the labels. Even beyond carrageenan, almond milk is not good for you because it has almonds. And what's wrong with almonds? Well, remember they're plant seeds. Plant seeds are highly defended. They contain all sorts of problems. They contain phytic acid, which is gonna chelate minerals, and they contain oxalate. Oxalic acid accumulates in the human body and is probably not that great for us. Small amounts, some people may be able to tolerate it, but in general, it's not that good for us and we have to get rid of it. I came across this study when I was writing my book, The Carnivore Code, hyperoxaluria and genital urinators, genital urinary disorders, that is like genitals and bladder disorders in children ingesting animal milk products. These are three children, this is a case series, presenting with hematuria, that's bloody urine, dysuria, pain when you urinate, or kidney stones, and all of them had hyperoxaluria, which is increased levels of oxalate in the urine believed to be related to the ingestion of excessive amounts of almond milk products. Why their parents are feeding them almond milk, I have no idea. <laughs> Our investigation of the oxalate content of several popular plant-based milk substitutes indicates that almond milk products are a particularly rich source of dietary oxalates. Here's the kicker. All genitourinary and urinary metabolic disturbances resolved after discontinuation of almond milk. Therefore, pediatricians should be aware of this potential link. If your pediatrician is telling your kid to eat almond milk, that's not a good thing, guys. You should not be feeding your kids almond milk or soy milk or any of these fake milk beverages 
that have carrageenan in or that are made from seeds that are made from quote unquote almonds, beans, legumes like soy. But really interesting, how many kids have urinary problems, whether it's pain with urination or hematuria or kidney stones related to almond milk? These are not good for children. We should not be feeding our children lots of these seeds. Almonds are not good food for humans. They are plant seeds, they're defended, not doing you any favors. One more study that I think is quite fascinating here. This is a uh, case report in a, an adult male, an oxalate nephropathy in an 81 year old man. He had well controlled diabetes, but no history of kidney disease. He had oxalate crystals in his urine. He had again hyperoxaluria. Kidney biopsy confirmed oxalate nephropathy and restriction of oxalate consumption combined with adequate hydration and oral calcium acetate resulted in partial renal recovery without the need for hemodialysis. He was an, a gentleman who, as they say, he was, quote, health-minded, who had read extensively about the benefits of antioxidants, quote, unquote. You guys all know what I think about most antioxidants. And he was eating a lot of foods that were ever very high in oxalates. If you read my book, The Carnivore Code, or if you've seen the things I post online, you'll know that some of the highest foods in oxalates are almonds, spinach, rhubarb, beets. And if you're eating all these foods because you believe that these are healthy, turmeric is quite high in oxalates, especially turmeric powder. You can make a smoothie that has almond milk, that has beets maybe. Maybe you're even gonna put in some turmeric in there and you're gonna get an oxalate bomb. And a lot of people are going to have many issues with this. It's not a good thing. So seeds, avoid seeds in your diet. I don't think they're healthy for humans. And I think you will be much better off without them. While we are talking about seeds, and this week I posted about Bill Gates' amazing hashtag soybot on my Instagram. So if you missed that video, you should watch and see how svelte, not svelte, Bill Gates is looking these days. I also came across this study, which I thought was quite interesting. The title says it all. <laughs> Increased aggressive behavior and decreased affiliative behavior in adult monkeys after long-term consumption of diets rich in soy proteins and soy isoflavones. Why are we feeding our children soy? Why are we eating soy as humans? Again, let's make it very clear. This is 15 months with uh, macaws. So these are not humans, but do we really want to be ingesting something that is changing primate behavior in general? I would say no. And it makes sense. This is a seed. Even though soy is classified as a legume, it's a seed. It's defended. Soy isoflavones, not great for humans. Again, I talk about this at length in my book. These are not something that are gonna make us healthier individuals. Avoid these things. So in summary, carrageenan, avoid it. Read the labels. Almonds in general, avoid them. High in oxalates. Soy, very high in phytic acid and changing the behavior of monkeys. This video is all about why you don't wanna eat nuts and seeds and legumes like soy and why these things are excluded on animal-based diet. So avoid those things and you will thrive. The other side of an animal-based diet is of course getting lots of well-raised meat and organs. If you need more organs in your diet, which I think so many people do, I just had a call with Chris Weidman today, former UFC champion. I'm so excited for him to do an animal-based diet starting now. And he said, I don't really like organs. Do they taste good? And I said, well, we've got the thing for you. Check us out at Heart and Soil, heartandsoil.co, we make grass-fed, grass-finished, regeneratively raised, desiccated organ supplements in a capsule. Later this month, we have a men's one coming out. It's called Whole Package. It has testicle and liver and blood. So we're super excited about this one. We know a lot of men out there are going to be very excited. They're going to really find benefits. I love eating testicle. It is hard to get a hold of fresh bull testicles in Costa Rica or even in the States. So I'm excited about the release of Whole Package as well. And yes, I said, I love eating testicle. I'm sure somebody's gonna take that out of context and repost it. It'll be a funny meme. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with it, guys. I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, yeah, so check out whole package on our website or check out our other supplements. Been super excited about, everyone is loving beef organs these days and Heart of the Warrior with heart and liver is one of my favorites. So check us out, heartandsoil.co. That's the other side of an animal-based diet getting all the animal meats and organs that are going to make you thrive. So hopefully this video is helpful. Stay radical, you guys. Love you all. And if you haven't heard, we're doing an animal-based gathering in Costa Rica, July 23rd to 26th. Go 
can always email us radicalhealth at hardensoil.co to get details. It's going to be right here in Santa Teresa, not in this room, but it's going to be right here in Santa Teresa and it's going to be amazing. So right now, stay radical.